Hello, welcome to the Bless Me Report and our new revamped podcast, The Patterns of God. Today we are talking about the love of God and how to love people in our relationships. So we're just going to start right into the material when we talk about the love of God and us having to love others in our relationships and trying to know if we truly are walking in love. And first and foremost, I want to start with John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father but by him and through him. And so this is the gate that we do everything nothing of god comes but by jesus christ and so you have to know that jesus christ is your personal lord and savior and we walk in that so this is his love working in us and through us it is by his spirit and we were going to start with just knowing the love of God and coming to the knowledge of him in his scripture, starting with 1 John 4 and how our love is simply an extension of God. So it's more semantics than anything else when I say we, um, of course, we technically love people, but in reality, we kind of do, don't love anyone. It's actually the Lord loving these people and how he is using his perfected love um, in us and through us to um, show it um, to him. So we're going to start with 1 John 4 and it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now is already in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear them. Hear them. We are of God. He that knoweth God hears us. He that is not of God hears us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth in the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved him, but he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify the Father sent the Son to be a savior of the world, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he is in him. For we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Right? So the major scripture that we are bringing out from this verse of 1 John 4 is 1 John 10, where it says, Herein that we, not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. And so this is just an amazing thing when we think about the love of God transforming us and us being, in short, this new creation 
in Christ Jesus, knowing that nothing comes of ourselves, nothing comes of our will, nothing comes uh, from us, but everything is by the Spirit of God and by His presence. And again, Jesus Christ is that gate in which all men enter in. Um, it says, we can do nothing outside of Him. And so, if we start to look inwardly and try to measure ourselves by our works or by how we believe we are loving or are keeping the commandments, um, his love has not been perfected in us because it says that the law was a schoolmaster, um, good for a time. So we just know what is um, evil and what is good. However, we are made perfect in love by the finished work of Christ Jesus, by his death, burial, and resurrection, but also by the Spirit, being the Spirit of liberty. So again, the Bible is um, Jesus. Uh, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Bible is perfected prophecy. However, the scripture says we don't measure if we're in Christ by um, law keeping or by our works it's by the spirit of god if we are truly sanctified if we're truly renewed and if we are truly following him and um being loving and this is how you measure love and you measure love at its root the root of love again it says in first john 4 god is love um he who dwelleth in god dwelleth in love and so what we'll do is oftentimes we will work backwards. <laughs> we see scriptures like Galatians 5. Um, this is the fruit of the spirit. Goodness, kindness, meekness, gentleness, self-control, love, joy, peace, faithfulness, right? And then what we'll try to do is embody these characteristics so that we are Christ-like, right? But again, that is simply behavior modification. That is not the transfiguration. That's not the regeneration. That's not being transformed into an entirely new being, which is being baptized by the Spirit of God, being baptized by fire. And this is John 3, where we need the baptism of His Spirit. We don't need behavior modification because again, that root is works versus the Lord in his sovereignty and him be called, being called the preeminence, which we're going to go into the scriptures about. Um, everything is by him and through him. His spirit work is in us. And so what that means is that the Lord is sovereign. He is over everything. And so when the Lord in Ephesians says he has predestined us to good works and the Lord is the one that works us and wills us in good works is by his spirit that we do anything good because again God is love and he sh chooses to show love through his people so we are instruments of his likeness and so Christ likeness um, becoming more like him is not me trying to do what I believe the Lord um, <laughs> thinks um, what I think the Lord wants but true transfiguration true transformation true humility is me humbling myself to the Spirit of God wherever it leads and this is what um, the Bible says um, through John 14 6 like he is the true gate and so um, he says the voice of a stranger you will not hear my sheep hear my voice and so as I'm trying to love people properly as I'm trying to love myself properly I'm not going off of what I believe to be right um, because we often mistake niceness for love and that's not true <laughs> because the embodiment of love is actually kindness not niceness so it's actually pretty unloving for me not to witness to my unsaved friends and tell them that sex outside of marriage is a sin and your soul is at risk because of your sin and your iniquity and your transgressions but we think through the methodology 
or through <laughs> how we do it. <laughs> Being like, oh, that's not kind. That That's some strong language that's unloving. No, because again, God is love. It says, he who converts a sinner from the error of their, his ways has saved the soul. And it says, love has, co it has covered a multitude of sin. But the Bible also says, he who uh, loves covers a multitude of sin. So to love people properly is to, um, in short, drag them out of hell. And even the book of Jews says that it says some, um, in short, comes to Christ and comes to salvation and conversion through compassion, through love. But some come through fear, the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Um, that the conviction of God um, draws them out to salvation while they yet smell like smoke. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and so if we equate love with niceness, we're never going to love properly. Um, love will never have its perfect work because we again are having a works-based faith where we think that a type of behavior, a type of character, a type of tone is love. Love is not tone, Jesus is love, and Jesus is tone. And so we have to have the spirit of freedom, the spirit of liberty, that anything that we do, we are, are doing um, in humility and obedience, however the spirit of God is telling us to do it. And so, again, it says be angry, but sin not. So this is just a misinterpretation of what love truly is. Love is truth. And so if we are not moving in the spirit of God, we're going to automatically work in our own intellect. We're going to work in our own um, thought process and we're going to work in our own understanding, but his ways are not our ways. Um, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Therefore, we can't equate like, oh, I did a good thing. I'm moving in love. No, like even Peter, when Jesus told him about his second coming, but also before the second coming, his crucifixion, Peter thought he was being loving to Jesus by saying, no, you will not die this way, Lord. And what did Jesus say to Peter as a response for his love? Because again, in our own intellect and our own understanding, Peter was doing a good thing, but what he did was not a God thing. And he got rebuked by God. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> Your good pleasure is not to do the will of the Father. And so this is truly love. Um, we don't measure anything that we do, um, and we don't measure every, anything by our own understanding but the truth of God's love is through um, his spoken word but also his written word but again my sheep hear my voice a stranger they will not hear and then remember the Lord is a still small voice his ways are not our ways um, his thoughts are not our thoughts so we have to test everything just like first John 4 says if it be the spirit of God, or is it our own biases? Is it our own leanings? Is it our own understanding being limited? But again, the Lord is higher than us. And so when I say like, hey, we don't really love anybody, that's truly the scripture. It's the Lord and the spirit of God being the root working through us um, to yield fruit. And so this is not um, salvation, but we are saved by grace, through faith. Um, and this is the finished work of Christ Jesus. Um, Romans 10, 9, if you confess your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. So this is not a salvation issue. This is more of a um, Christ likeness issue. Am I becoming more like him? Am I becoming a new creation as listed out in 1 Corinthians 15? And I know like sometimes we get romanticized by that scripture, but we have to know that literally we are becoming new beings. We are becoming a, a different kind of thing. It says that um, God made us slightly lower than the angels and we're going to go to, into this in the scriptures but he also says that jesus is the first born of a new kind 
And, and so when he says like, hey, crucify your old man that your new man may live, this is not figurative language. This is not symbolic language. This is not metaphorical language. This is a complete transfiguration. This is it's almost, it, it is equated almost in the same regard as a butterfly, uh, a, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. That is how um, big the trans um, the transformation, the transfiguration is. So we're just going to continue in the scriptures of like, yo, I can't measure anything of like, oh, I'm just a loving person. No, it is the Christ in us and that's what it says in the scriptures working through us and so if i try to do anything of my own power if i try to do anything of my own will if i try to do anything in my own strength it'll fall and fall short and it won't yield um the fruit the lord wants us to be fruitful and multiply and maybe if we're not making as many disciples and winning souls for the kingdom maybe his love has not been perfected in us it says one plants another waters but the lord gets the increase so are we planting and watering salvation properly are we giving people the gospel properly are we giving them the love of god properly because again the Lord doesn't want us living in fear because the goodness of God leads men to repentance. And so this is his love that he is patient, he is kind, he is forgiving, he is um, gentle, um, he is stern sometimes. And whatever he does, uh, we have to be led of his spirit. And so we're first going to go into Romans 3 verse 11. It says, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. And actually we're going to start with verse 10. Um, as is written, there is none righteous, not, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. And so what that means is that if I try to equate anything that I do of myself, of my will, like, oh, I'm just a good person, I'm just a loving person. I am, in short, the New Testament says you crucify the finished work of Jesus um, twice when you don't repent, when you sin, when um, you don't give yourself over to the Holy Spirit. And so what that means is that, hey, me denying the Lord um, in um, it's like, <laughs> it's, 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 this is the mysteries of the Lord, this is the um, patterns of God and um, how interesting he is because he says that, hey, he is married to the backslider. And so again, I'm not hyper grace in any terms or I'm not once saved, <laughs> always saved because um, first or second Peter says like, hey, if you leave the faith and you don't come back, you were never of it in the first place. However, when it talks about um, God's love, um, his grace, where sin abounds, grace abounds the more. And so this is how powerful his love is, this is how great his finished work is, and this is how wise and how all-knowing and how omnipotent and how all-powerful um, the Lord is. But if I try to equate him to man's standards, to um, our understanding, then I in short, don't give God all the glory. I don't give him his proper due. I don't give him his proper adoration. And then that's how pride seeps in. This is how rebellion seeps in, occult witchcraft. Um, even the Bible says rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. And so if I'm not loving or giving him proper thanksgiving, giving him proper praise of like, we say like glory be to God is like a little um, church idiom or just these cliches but it's truly like hey it's nothing of myself and John the Baptist said this in um, John 3 is like or in the Gospels was keep it there um, I must decrease that the Lord may increase and so um, the Lord, and I just want to give y'all something really interesting too about the Bible verse that says our righteousness is filthy rags because it got lost, well not lost, because all you have to do is learn Hebrew and Aramaic and you'll actually get the meaning of that scripture. But filthy rags, um, in short, I'm not trying to be graphic, but it's literally just what the scripture means, um, is the equivalent of used tampons. So um, this is the 
menstruation cloth or towel you would use when a, um, a woman is on her time of the month or period, right? So on your best day, when you are prayed up, you are fasting, you are doing everything the Lord says, <laughs> your righteousness is the equivalent of blood shed cloth um, from women um, in childbearing and like just the the curse, like literally pain and childbearing and all of this whatever is from the fall of men that is the our best day and so when the bible says like hey none has sought after the lord none is good um, not one it's only christ jesus it's only the father um this is proper posture of humility knowing that nothing comes of myself nothing of my love and him perfecting his love in us is not because his love fails in any way, um, but because we are frail, because we are human and we are flesh. So in reality, what is happening when the Bible says to crucify your old man is the presence of God, the glory of God coming forth and breaking through the old man, breaking through the flesh that we may be spirit met that we may be christ-like and we may be more like him and so anything that we do um again we are a major key to know if we are loving god is if we are listening to that still small voice from the holy spirit being a, an advocate and if we are doing what he says he's like hey my sheep hear my voice and after a stranger they will not follow so anywhere where the lord leads that is us loving him but again this is his love working in us to work and will us to good pleasures and to do good works and so he has predestined us to do all these good things um, and this is the sovereignty of God he is over everything he stands in the past he stands in the present he stands in the future all at the same time because he's not bound by time but time is simply a tool and an instrument that he uses and so he has set up all these opportunities where we can be humble, where we can be obedient, and we can follow after him. And all we have to do is move in faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. And this is how you please God. Hebrews 11:6. Without faith, it's impossible to please him because you must believe that he first is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so, when we are seeking him it's the spirit of god doing that moving us um, in this direction and so we go from faith to faith glory to glory because we are returning to that first intimacy and relationship communion and fellowship with the father that we lost in the garden of eden through the sin and rebellion of adam and eve but jesus christ being the second adam is that finished work so how do we move uh, from our human love to a more perfect love this comes from john 14 and also john 15 about the lord in short choosing us right so we're actually going to start this in john 15 um starting with doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo, maybe verse 12 this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I call you, called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it unto you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. So again, we're not measuring love off of what we have determined through our human <laughs> intellect or our human understanding to be love. And he says in his scripture like hey again 
I don't call you servants because servants don't know what the master is doing. But I call you friends because anything that the father tells me, I tell you. And so that's the spirit of the baptism um, being baptized by fire is being able to hear the voice of God. It says like, hey, you don't need a pope. You don't need um, a priest. Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is the mediator between God and men that we have direct access to the Father. So just like how I am speaking to you, the Lord is able to speak to you in the scriptures so the Bible grounds us um, so that we're able to test everything if it is from the Lord. However, we know um, if we are hearing from him, if we obey him. So again, we have the Ten Commandments, we have the Old Testament, New Testament, uh, we have the Bible, we obey the things in the Bible. So that's just holiness, like, hey, <laughs> don't have sex out of marriage, don't smoke uh, weed, don't um, get drunk. Um, the Bible is just, again, a schoolmaster, it's just the law. It's like, a, hey, <laughs> you didn't know what sin is, we're just gonna tell you what sin is so you understand. This is, um, um, I would just say like our training wheels <laughs> but the Lord wants us to have deep fellowship with him and deep communion with him so that we move from holiness as just a Christian disciple follower of Jesus Christ believer standard and we move into righteousness and righteousness is doing whatever the Lord's telling you to do so if the Lord tells me hey make this YouTube video <laughs> and I don't do it I am NOT keeping his commandments Nowhere in the Bible does it say Winston needs to write a podcast and record it and edit it, nothing. But it will be accounted as sin to me because James 1, I believe, says when it's in your power to do good and you don't do it, it's counted sin to you. So that is what righteousness is. Whatever your sphere of responsibility or influence is, wherever the lord is leading you um to be like maybe a janitor or an engineer an artist a rapper a teacher a flight attendant anything you have to be able to hear the voice of god for yourself and as you are following the patterns of god you're following his nature and you're telling i'm not telling him you're responding to what he's telling us to do then that is true love and um this is where we're going to go in um, almost like a finishing no nope, not going to finish but going to John uh, 14 it says like hey <laughs> if you love me um, keep my commandments um, and this is another one where John 15 literally says again if you love me keep my commandments so this is not um, love in law keeping we're not um, doing things um, because we're trying to earn salvation or we're trying to get a blessing from the Lord but we um, do it out of hearing him that's communion It's like <laughs> hey if I tell you like hey um, let's throw out my middle name my name is Avery if I tell you like hey I want to be called Winston I don't really like being called Avery and you keep calling me Avery do you really love me and so this is the truth of loving other people properly because again if we measure love by our understanding and human intellect um, this is going to mess up platonic relationships family relationships friend relationships and romantic relationships because everything is by the spirit of prophecy the spirit of revelation and um, wisdom from God so fellas I'm going to help you out <laughs> you are trying to win um, a girl's affection right and a book that talks about this is the five love languages and it talks about how love languages are touch physical touch or is that affirmation quality time acts of service and gifts and so how you give is not how you receive and not everyone has the same love languages as you so what we have to know is that the father has his own love language <laughs> and so fellas again I'm gonna give you some game if you try to meet a woman <laughs> and you don't know her love language the Holy Spirit is the ultimate wingman <laughs> and 
not to make this romantic because this is all about how we love our friends well this is how we love sinners and the unbelievers well of um, different religions we do as the Holy Spirit commands us and so I think oh if I just give them the gospel that's good enough and that is that is our foundation. The gospel of Jesus Christ, his second coming, his death, burial, resurrection, and him coming to give either eternal judgment or eternal um, salvation. <laughs> However, um, the Bible says in Colossians 3, I think 15, or it might be 16, that you need to season your words um, in grace, knowing how to meet every person individually. So this is what will make our evangelism effective and our ministry more effective as well. Okay, so if we're finding that our ministry is ineffective or that our evangelism or conversions are ineffective, it may be that we're not seizing our words, knowing how to meet everybody individually. And so if the Lord is like, hey, okay, I'm going to evangelize to some non-believers who do not know the Lord. I'm going to give them the gospel, the second coming of Jesus Christ. But a way in might be, I'm just doing, going to do flowers. If the Lord is like, hey, give this Muslim couple some yellow daisies before you give them the gospel or <laughs> however. <laughs> and you don't know their We'll say their grandmother just died and um, they were really mournful and her favorite flower was yellow daisies. Boom. You just use the Bible, prophecy, obedience, humility, all to win a soul because the Lord wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to be impactful. He wants us to be powerful. And if we are not bearing fruit, we have to re- <laughs> orient ourselves and come back to the drawing board of like hey maybe I'm ineffective because I'm not being led by the Spirit and so look at your love life as well with the five love languages perhaps I can win her because the Holy Spirit is <laughs> your wingman if I'm just obedient to the Lord if I just wear this color or I just give her this gift or I give her this compliment or if I'm here on this day serving and she's here, the Lord is the ultimate <laughs> romantic comedy. He is the ultimate writer, author, and finisher of our faith. And so if we are trying to orchestrate our own love stories, if we're trying to orchestrate our own ways of evangelism of like, the Lord does it this way and this is how he's always done it, we fall into legalism, law keeping, and religion. The Lord is just like a person. If I listen to rock music for a week and you're like, oh yeah, Winston loves rock music. I'm always gonna play rock music. If I like jazz next week, you can't bind and keep me in your box and understanding because just because the Lord is not a person does not mean he does not have personality. And so we have to give the Lord the freedom to be as free as he wants to be outside of our box of religion and law keeping and ritualism because again he's not a dead idol he <laughs> he is a father that we have relationship with and we have communion with and so when it comes to relationship with others uh, relationship romantically with our friends with our platonic um, people with unbelievers with our church families we have to be sensitive to his spirit. Wherever the Lord wants, we go. <laughs> and um, this is um, Christ likeness. And I want to talk about being made in the image of God. Because in Genesis, it's like, hey, the Lord made us in his image. So we can't think that just because we're in um, the image of God that we are in his likeness. And so what that means, it's just like an example of a watermelon, right? If I take a picture of a watermelon and I'm like, eat this, you're like, I can't eat that. <laughs> it's not a watermelon because why? It's in the image of a watermelon, but it's not a the likeness of, <laughs> of a watermelon. And so when we are reborn, when we are transfigured, when we are transformed, again, 1 Corinthians, um, it might be 5, no, this is 5.17, um, where it says that 
uh, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. What he's talking about is that we are in the image of God. It's like, we, no man has seen God, but he kind of looks like this. <laughs> but um, when we go into his likeness, what we are doing is being the, Jesus is the first fruit. He's the firstborn of a new type of creature. And we are following that lineage. We are following that inheritance. We are following that bloodline of Jesus. It's like, hey, um, Jesus was the second Adam. The, through the first Adam, all fell and were separated from God. By one man's sins, we're all separated. But by another man's righteousness, Christ, the son of man, the son of God, uh, we're all drawn back into fellowship with the Father. Now that we have a relationship, and sin does not separate us. And so I really want to talk and end uh, with this Christ likeness of us being a new breed of creature. And this is in Colossians 1. Giving th oh, verse 12. I am sorry. <laughs> Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. For he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is all that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Now having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am a minister made unto you, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fulfill up, fulfill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints, to whom God would make known that is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ Jesus in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his work, which worketh it. And so what we are trying to do, and again, we don't do anything of our own strength. We um, do everything by the finished work of Christ Jesus and his revelation, his wisdom, and his insight, his prophetic insight, like giving us game of like how to make it through this life. That Jesus is the firstborn of a totally new creature, having preeminence. Everything is made by him, through him, for him. And so us likewise, what we're, we're not trying to do anything. Everything is finished, but we have wisdom, understanding, revelation of how we can commune with the Lord, how we can be God pleasers, how we can be in right standing with him. 
by having the riches of his glory. And so, again, we love because of him first loving us, because none has seeked after God, but he sought us and he won us <laughs> on the cross through his death, burial and resurrection. And this is the peace <laughs> that surpasses all understanding that again, Jesus Christ is the gate. No man comes to the Father except through his Son because he's the way, the truth, and the life. So if he's teaching us his ways, if he's teaching us his patterns, if he's teaching us his character and his temperament, as we follow him, um, yielding and humbling ourselves in obedience to his voice, following after his voice and um, whoever, we will be fruitful. We will multiply and we will have 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold because this is his promises. His promises are yes and amen. Nothing that he has said will come back to him void. So if we see any lack anywhere in our life, so that's in relationship, in character, in finances, in souls, in fruitfulness, anywhere, the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy but the Lord has come to give us life and life more abundantly. And so we have to know that we are not trying because we don't do anything in our own strength, but we are yielding and humbling ourselves because he who humbles himself um, under the mighty hand of God, he will be exalted in due season. So any way that he's telling us to evangelize, any way that he's telling us to uh, preach the gospel any way that we work we work unto the goodness of God because he is our father he is our Lord he is our Savior and anything good in us any love that we have um, in us is merely us being instruments of his love and his goodness and so that's in short where I want to end with John 14 about the goodness of God um, John 14 and 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide um, with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the word world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but ye see me because I live ye shall live also at that day ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So our works are the manifestations of God's love for us. It is the perfected love of God, it is the goodness of God, that even while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Even while we were yet far away, he loved us and he chose us. It says like, hey, we have not chosen God. Well, we did not come to God, whoever your salvation story is. The revelation is that the Lord won us on the cross. And that is the finished work of Christ Jesus. That by his blood, we are able to have fellowship with the Father, have relationship um, through the Son. And we don't ask um, anything to Jesus, which is really interesting. And this is in John. We ask all things to the Father in the name of Jesus. Because this is what the Lord wants. The Lord wants us to be in fellowship with him. And so, again, um, the Godhead is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so, everything was given over um, to Jesus um, by this Father's choosing, including us. Um, how we love people, how we engage in, uh, with anything uh, natural, financial, romantic, school, <laughs> business. Um, anywhere that we have influence, we have the love of God because, again, we are his hands and feet. We are his instruments and we are going forth as ambassadors. We are standing in Christ's place, not, <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> um, in Christ's stead 
being Christ-likeness, being little Christ, Christians, little Christ everywhere we go. And so this is how we love um, others properly. This is how we love ourselves properly, is that the work of Jesus being complete is also being completed in us. So it's finished, but it's also progressive. It's also continual. And so more and more we crucify the flesh, more and more the glory of God and his presence is revealed in us. So we just thank him for that. And so that's where I just wanna leave us today, that this revelation is seeped into our hearts on good ground, that we are fruitful 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold over in the love of God, that we are not trying to be more loving, but we abide in love by abiding in his presence, abiding in his glory, abiding in his fellowship, and we hear the voice of God as he speaks one <laughs> to a friend um, face to face until his second coming. So tell people that, hey, the goodness of God has come in the uh, man Christ Jesus being God, the Son of God came in the flesh and God raised them from the dead. And tell people that God loves them. And this is the love of God that he has saved us. Jesus is the answer uh, for this time that we have. So um, that's my prayer, that is my uh, impartation um, to you that you will be fruitful in love and you'll be fruitful in Christ likeness. And so thank you for watching the Blessman Report with our newly revamped podcast, The Patterns of God. Hello, thanks for watching the Blessman Report at theblessmanreport.com. And if you would like to partner with us as we continue to make good family friendly Christian content, make sure to become a subscriber at theblessingreport.com where you can be a monthly or a weekly donator, or you can make a one-time donation in the description box below or the link in our bio. And if you purchase from theblessingreport.com slash shop, a portion of your proceeds goes to help fund our productions when you buy from our Christian clothing. And if you'd like to partner with us as we move towards our feature-led film and our TV series, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and turn on your bell notifications where we have new videos and podcasts every Wednesday and Sunday, so come back next week. Thank you so much for your love and support. Make sure to check out a playlist, subscribe, and watch another video. God bless.